A couple of years ago, Invent introduced joints into the assembly environment. Joints is another way to be able to put together um, components or parts in an assembly. The way that joints is different to constraints, uh, with constraints, when you uh, apply constraints to components, you're taking away degrees of freedom. So translation in X, Y, and Z, as well as rotation in your around your X, Y, and Z axes. With joints, you're giving components um, movement or lending them to movement. So the first joint I want to take a look at uh, is actually the automatic joint. So what the automatic joint does, it will choose one of these six joints over here and apply it um, with regards to what geometry you have chosen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, in the middle of this uh, component over there, okay, so the first, just, just to stop right there, the first component that it's, uh, that it's uh, selected is a grounded one that's asking me if I'd like to move that. I actually don't want to move that. So I'm going to go no, and I'm going to go apply um, on a different component. So I'm going to say I need this component over here, so the base of that component, to sit on the top of that. So what it does, it moves it over there. So now it's given us a rigid, uh, a rigid joint, and with that, I can also see that it's facing the wrong way. So what I can do is I can go and align this as well. So by selecting on a line, you'll see that I'm able to rotate it around until I've got the correct alignment. So I needed to align with that line over there, and it gives me that, um, that alignment. So now it's looking more like what I want. Uh, you can also have a gap in between as well. So if I select five, you'll see that it actually moves it up, um, giving you quite a little bit of control on your um, on your components over there. <clears throat> back to zero and you can also give it a name um, so that you know exactly which uh, which joint you are working with so from this I can go to my next joint and uh, that was my rigid joints over there if I select this geometry over here as well as the geometry in the front because of what I've chosen it, it says that I can do a rotation a rotational constraint or oh, rotational joint over there. That rotational joint, I'd say, you know, I actually want this to move in and out as well. So I can say cylindrical. So you can see there how it's giving it motion. So I'd be able to pull this plate off as well as rotate it around that axis over there. That's not how this works. So I'm actually going to give it a rigid joint. Now, say I didn't want the, the first joint to be rigid. I actually wanted to slide around on that face over there. I can go into my relationships folder over here and go find that rigid joint. I'm going to edit it. So now, when I edit this, <clears throat> I'm actually going to say, you know what, I want this to be a planar joint. And you can see that I can actually slide around on that plane over there, um, which is a little bit different to your slider joint. So that just slides left and right. Okay. So you can see how we're able to build this up with the different types of joints. So now that I've changed to a slider joint, you'll notice that I can actually slide it back and forth. Now, using joints doesn't mean that you don't, you can't use constraints either. So I can say, you know, I actually do want to put a constraint in as well. Um, and I want that face and that face. Okay. So because I've put it in the middle and I've said it's got a slide in the middle, it's actually going to say that I can't do this. But you can use your constraints in here as well. Let's move this over here. Uh, if I wanted to use that constraint, I'm actually going to change this to a planar constraint. So what this would, should allow me to do now is then go and put my constraint on. So let's go. There we go. So now it's snapped to that point over there. And I can give it a bit of an offset, so maybe 15. Now what we want to do is we want to put the shafts in, so back to my joints, automatic, and it brings it in, and it tells me that it's going to be a rotational constraint. Um, I'm going to use, uh, sorry, a, a, a joint, a rotational joint. I'm actually going to go now and use constraints to insert this over here, just to show you how much longer or how many more constraints I've got to put in if I had to use constraints versus joints. So with constraints, I would say, let's uh, axial constraints over here. 
Okay, so it puts it in over there. So now that it can move in or out, okay, as well as then a mate constraint or flash constraint over there. Okay, so there I had to use two constraints um, where I could have just used one. Now, over here, I also got a bit of an issue, so I've just got to um, make sure that everything is in line. I'll just do it by sight here quickly. Okay. Okay, so that's just a quick introduction to, to joints and constraints. So, you know, don't be scared to use it. Um, it actually is very, very, very useful. Um, and, you know, sort of, it's very, very um, easy to get into. Um, you know, just through your connect. And one thing that's, that a lot of people wouldn't know about is the align. So sometimes when you do connect and you put your joint in, um, it doesn't align it correctly. And then, you know, think, oh, well, you know, you know, why must we use this? Thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoy your day.